All right, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, and welcome to the stream. It looks like I didn't have any music going. There we go. Uh, today, more Kerbal. More Kerbal, and we're going to try to go beyond Kerbin today. The to sphere of influence there. Uh, but first, I need to go over here and check audio, make sure everything's okie dokie. All right, that seems to be okie dokie. All right, let's... Um, Bring up CCAN and see if there's any updates. Do, 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 Yeah, a little bit of a mess on my desk here. Um, I don't know why. <clears throat> um, So evidently, um, there might be a disconnect between uh, Zero Kerbal and Secan because even his space dock files are out of date. But uh, GitHub and his he keeps his form up to date. Follow him on Twitter. So. Um, yeah, yeah, we're we're all good. We're all up to date. That's good. Let's launch the career. <laughs> Are we killing Kerbals today? No, no. Kerbal lives matter. You know? Should, right? There you go. See? Well, we're going to um, we're going to take the same relays that we put in uh, the bigger ones around Kerbin. We're going to send them to Duna. We have to rework the uh, lifter and the, um, the kicker stage or transitional stage or insertion stage. What do you want to call it? Duna or bust? We're going to try. We're going to try. Try to get some communication out there. <clears throat> That'll be good because by time we get to Duna, our scientists will uh, be level five and they can start uh, cranking away on some science in there. And we might even transmit some... Um, I think how we do that. Have you ever considered uploading your crap? No, because mine are mine are very generalized. They're they're not they're not um, they're not very unique at all. Um, I've never made anything that I've been really really proud of. They're all been just functional, you know. So, <laughs> all right, there we go. I did make one mothership with a. Um, That's true. He can complain about the lack of snacks. I did make a long time ago when I did a, um, I was trying to establish a base on Duna. Actually I did, but how I did it is instead of sending rocket after rocket after rocket, I constructed a big mothership that was not aerodynamic and I barely got it into orbit. And then we started launching rockets, rendezvousing and loading it up so that when the Kerbals left, they would have everything they needed to, and the the base components were already on the surface. It was it was kind of fun, except for the driving around with rovers and stuff. That was that was not fun. All right, so um, we got some science. Let's see what we might have to unlock before we try to build anything. So the same rocket we used to uh, put the three big relays. I want to send the same cargo. So let's call this Duna. Oops, there we go. Um, and let's um, let's think about how this is gonna work. First of all, 
see what we need here. So let's go to, oops, KSP Delta V map. Take a look. Okay. All right. So according to this, we get to Duna. All right. So let's say a thousand, say 300. So 1300 round up to 300. So we need 1600 just to get, um, into an elliptical orbit. Now we're not going to land. So that's good. So let's, let's count this again. So 1000, 1300, 1600, uh, let's round up to 14. So 2000 Delta V. Huh? So we need 2000 Delta V to get from Uh, Kerbin's orbit. All right, let's see what we got here. Um, all right. So this gets us to Kerbin orbit. Um, so we need to, we need to, uh, rework this a little bit. Well, the thing about it is this right here, this right here are, this is a bad number. This right here is our, our delivery system. So I need to, I need to deliver this stage. So if, I need to rework um, or add a stage See here. So we don't need all of this. This was just to get us to a high Kerbin orbit. So let's take these off. And uh, where did I put the uh, reaction wheels? Okay, so we can get rid of this stage. Um, hey, good morning, editor. How the heck are you doing today? Let's, um, hey, cartoon nerd, how you doing? Can you, uh, so this is, this is what we want to deliver to Duna. So let's make a, doing okay? I got you. I get you. I hear you. So, uh, did I, oh, I did, didn't I? Oh, there it is. Um, we're not going to land. So basically we need 1300, 1600 to get there. So we need a, a 1600 Delta V stage. Okay. So let's add that. That's not where the decouple. Okay. Hmm. That's going to be in vacuum, leaving Kerbin. Okay. I don't think I need to do that. Let's see if we... I like how these little cars... Yeah, that... They're, uh, they're busy. Oh, I just ran over a bunch of Kerbals. It's terrible. Mm. All right. Um, let's see if we, um, do that. And 
Currently, let's go with this. Oops, wrong key. All right, there's our 2000 Delta V. A very high thrust rate ratio. Um, I have never played KSP, but I'm finding it interesting. It is, um, it's, it's a game with a learning curve and, uh, I don't, oh geez. Um, when I say this, I'm not being modest or anything, but Hey monster, good morning to you. Um, someone like me that has no actual interest in rocketry, you know, um, I don't watch rocket launches that often. Um, I was, uh, I was tasked, somebody gifted this game to me and they said, have fun. And I was about to quit because I was doing everything I thought possible to get my first rocket into orbit. And uh, I, I just kept failing, <laughs> uh, but I, I kept at it and uh, learned more and more and, you know, got a little bit better here and there. All right, so this stage, hopefully, will uh, get us on our way to Duna and um, I'm concerned with the low thrust to weight ratio though. Oh, I don't want that. Yeah, there's a higher thrust, it's under. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some uh, cheaty here with some uh, fuel tanks. <clears throat> There's our, there's our 2000 Delta V. Now, um, obviously they're not gonna stay there like that. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Cartoon nerd, thanks for the follow. So what I'm gonna do here, I think, um, ooh, oh, those are too big. Um, yeah, well, according to, I, I rounded up. So, so I said a thousand, 1300, 1600, um, and then another 400. So 2000 Delta V just to get to a 60 kilometer orbit. So this says right here that we have 2,244 Delta V, um, this stage right here. This is my um, delivery stage for the uh, for the satellite, so I don't want to touch this delta V. Um, so we're we're over the amount, which is fine. We just gotta get it up into orbit. That's all. Um, trying to find a way to make this look a little a little bit more aerodynamic. Oh, I don't like those. Oh, wait, 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 wait. There we go. All right. Oh, wait. Hey, good morning, Rares. How you doing? Uh, we're going to go ahead and empty these out. Then we can do... I know what you're thinking. Uh, what are you doing there, Andy? I know. All right, then we can just uh, kind of cheat like that. So our stage to go from Kerbin orbit, which is stage six, uh, we calculated um, about 2000 and that was overestimating. So if we do it again, so say like we get to orbit, all right? So to go from Kerbin's orbit to Duna, we need to get out of the um, sphere of influence, we need 950. I'm just going to say 1,000. Then we need, I'm going to say 300. This is to make the, 
the intercept, the cap, or not the capture, but the intercept. So 1,300, and then another 300 to get this weird elliptical orbit into the sphere of influence. So another 300, so 1,600, and then to actually get our orbit, now we're gonna have a higher orbit. So 16 and 400 is 2,000. So that's my estimate, 2,000 Delta V, and we got 2,231. So we got more than we need. <clears throat> All right. Now we want to lift all this into orbit above 250 kilometers. And I think this lifter will do it because this was designed to lift it to much higher orbit. Um, all right, so we got RCS there. I don't think I need to, maybe I should. I need to, I need to put some sort of um, assistance for maneuvering here. And I think what I'm gonna do is borrow what is in here. Oh, actually, we're gonna take this, copy this, we're gonna modify it. But we're gonna put it um, right here for now. And you still have a battery, but I want, I want bigger reaction wheels. All right, so we've got um, power generation. We got an antenna, but once we pop the fairing, we're gonna have big communication in here. All right, so now we're looking to lift this into a high orbit. Um, that gets us off the ground, but it doesn't get us into orbit. So that's where our boosters come in. So let's uh, line up the engines. A little, a little difficulty here. Oh, that's because I put solar panels. Right, let me take those off. Go back. So we shortened our, our lifter here a little bit. I'm just trying to get the engines lined up. There we go. All right, we still have our struts. We'll clean those up a little bit. Uh, let's combine all of our engines here. Um, all right, that that is that is orbit. Wait, something's wrong. There we go. <laughs> All right, that's orbit. Why doesn't that show 2000 Delta V? Used to. Interesting. Oh, wait a minute. What's going on here? All right, that's those. The decoupler, which actually should go four. There we go, there's a 2000. All right, there we go. Um, let's go in here and clean up this a little bit. That's a little better. And let's um All right. I 
That's a lot of hardware for orbit. Yeah, well, we're going to try to put a relay around Duna. Why not? So let's double check. 134, we definitely lift off. Uh, we won't be in atmosphere all the time, but this gets us about three to 400 Delta V above what we need for an orbit. Well, you know, the only way to find out is to do it, right? Oh, excuse me. All right, let's put on some uh, clampy things here. All right, let's fix our staging. And looks like it should work. The numbers, anyways. At least it doesn't go through the VAB. <laughs> All right, let's um, let's try this. See if it works. Herbal straining right now. Ah, oh, we got a nighttime launch. All right, so I would like to put this at about 225 kilometers up. All right, let's see what happens here. Three, two, one. We're going. It's going up. <clears throat> they're pretty beefy satellites too they're, they're the same same big old honking re-100s we put in a uh, round curbin that's right i said honking All right, there goes our gravity turn. Ah, uh, three. I was just gonna, I was gonna take one off, but I figured, you know, if I get out there and I could put two into a polar orbit, why not just put three in a, you know, standard orbit? All right, so. Those are these right here. Whoa. All right. This goes our boosters. Still, still going up. That's good. I feel tired today. I feel like I didn't get enough sleep last night. Went to bed late. Yeah, I didn't really get that much sleep last night. I'm checking my phone because I wear a watch. It keeps track of my sleep patterns. It's actually very informative. All right, so we've got just a minute left of fuel. Uh, we're gonna make this lighter here. We're gonna go ahead and pop fairing. The fairing weighs a little bit. And so we don't forget. It's out. Oh. Dude. I was watching some videos of a game. I don't think I'd be in a game. It's called a uh, squad or something like that. Um, squad command, I think is what it was. Some of these people really know their uh, their tanks and artillery and, and you know stuff. Hey, Chris. Good morning. 
Always interesting to see how every streamer approaches rocket design differently. You go for the sleek aerodynamic. I do. I do. I mean, I mean, I in during my historical, <clears throat> I was launching shuttles and stuff like that, but they weren't my design. So, all right. So to get our orbit at 225, uh, saying we need 239, we have 300. So probably what I need to do. Um, oh, actually, you know what? All right, no, we should be okay. Uh, what I probably need to do is probably transfer some fuel from this satellite to here just to make sure we can deorbit this. Yeah, my rockets are pretty standard and, you know, most of the rocket launches are, you know, boosters, lifters, second stage, and the, the payloads inside of a fairing normally. But yeah, there's a lot of people that, that launch, you know, all sorts of crazy. I remember uh, my first lander because I couldn't get, have it. I couldn't figure out how to get enough fuel for my lander uh, because I would always land and I would tip over. So I started putting fuel tanks radial. So my, my launcher, I mean, my lifter would have this, my lander on top and there would be so much drag from the fuel tanks. So yeah we didn't have burritos last night um i had my first there's a, a really nice Italian restaurant in town. So I had their baked ziti, which I've never had before. It was so good. I'm, I'm, I love pasta. All right. So once again, we only have 61 Delta V left in this thing. Um, well, that's what it says now. I think what we're going to do is we're going to transfer some OGs. Oh, okay, I don't need that anymore. Go away. We're going to transfer some fuel. Out of that satellite into there. Then if we stage. Now we have 232. So that should be enough fuel to get this um, deorbited. So we're going to... Uh, Have this thing turn around. And we're going to do a little spurt just so. <gasps> don't hit it, don't hit it, don't hit it, don't hit it. Oh, that was close. <laughs> That's right. Bumper cars in space. All right. So that'll deorbit nicely. And we'll go back to this. Let's get our engines online. We've got 2,299 Delta V. And we're going to send this to Duna. Oh. All right, there's Duna. Then we're going to do an advanced. Huh. Maybe. Is that broken? Hmm. Well. I never know. I, I actually don't know. It, it gives you this so you can actually, so red means a lot of Delta V blue means least Delta V. Um, again, not a rocket guy. So if I create a node for Duna, so I want to include my capture burn. Whoa. All right. And we say create a node. 
So this is gonna cost us 1,012 Delta V, but we don't do this for about two years. Wait, is that right? Oh. Uh, I don't see, uh, I don't think that's right. It's weird. Normally you'd see your, uh... okay, let's turn that off. Well, that's odd. Oh, because the moon or uh, the moon's in a way. That's perfect. All right, so hang on. Let's move that. And let's do a little time warp here. Now let's try it. No. Oh, oh there. No, we still. Mun is in the way still. Oh, that was Minmus was in the way. Sorry. Not a, not, oh geez. Not a good launch window. Uh, There we go. Jeez, finally. So that's our target. And I'm not going to worry about this until we get. Yeah, I'm not going to worry about that. All right. So that's going to happen in 94 days. So we're going to um, bring up Kerbal Alarm Clock. I just open Epic. Wait. Uh, okay. Um, well, to be fair, the window is fine. Yeah, yeah, it is. You're right. You're absolutely right. I just opened Epic. Seems it will give KSP for free in a week. Oh, nice. Nice, monster. I believe you can click on the colored map and pick a closer. Yep, you can. You can pick closer or further away. I, I just go with what it says. Google search gives the following description. Pork chop selection is a graphical representation of an interplanetary transfer window. Hey, pork chop. <laughs> um, so on this, we're going to say add a new alarm for our maneuver node. And we'll just keep the same name. But I want to pad this by 15 minutes. We'll add the alarm. And what happens in 15 minutes, we're going to come back and recalculate. There used to be a problem that in, in, I don't know if it was always me, that if I was under 200 kilometer orbit, my Delta V estimation here would always go up as time went on. And it never used to do that. So the only way I could get around it is go above 200 kilometers. And that's where we're sitting right now. So, so we need to wait 94 days. Um, all right, that's fine. We can do that. Let's go to the tracking station. So there's a there's actually a mod called Transfer Window that um no, I is what I did tax is I started this so I wanted to have a challenge. So game settings, I increased the occlusion for the uh signals. And you got to have a signal. We can have plasma blackouts for communication and kerbals and all that kind of stuff. And I increased the re-entry heating by 120%. Um, and then instead of using a um, life support mod, I thought, hey, I'll go with a part failure mod. So I've used O scrap, the scrap yard. I didn't want to do the kerbal construction time this time because I wanted to have fun. I wanted to put rockets up and stuff like that. And um, everything was going fine until we started building up an inventory of parts that we recovered with stage recovery and it started chunking in the editor. Uh, the moment I removed the mods, all the chunk went away. And I told the mod author and he said he's got someone coming on board to help him. He's put out a pre-release of it. So I'm gonna wait until it's released before I try to add it. So right now the only, um, we have no real limitation except for me trying to not kill a Kerbal. All right, let's go see how the guys are doing here.
All right, so they should be in training, right? They're level four over halfway to level five. All right, so I know it's one of the hardest challenges. You're absolutely right. So you know what we'll do? Let's go to the space center. <clears throat> and well, actually, no, we should probably go to um, I don't want everyone to get uh, epileptic seizures. So if we go out to the tracking station and then we go to the curl alarm clock, um, I think if we just do this, we should, our, our Kerbal should train. It should train up to level five. All right, here we go. So this is 15 minutes before the actual burn. All right, so we want to say delete this and jump to the ship. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, just to make sure things are still clicking, we're going to delete our estimated tra trajectory here. We're going to delete this. Doing is still the target, right? Hey, Orion, how the heck are you doing? Uh, the heck? Okay, Duna's still the target. Do another estimate. All right, so in 14 minutes, 32 seconds, we're going to burn 971 Delta V for 55 seconds, which should give us a an encounter with Ike. Come on, guys. No, with Duna. All right, good. Wait, what? Did Ike get in the way? Ike got in the way of Duna. All right, that's fine. We can fix that. First, the moon gets in the way, the moon, then, okay, whatever. So we'll go ahead and say, execute. <laughs> we'll do a, we'll do a course correction to see if we can't get out of Ike's, you know, we might even just fly by Ike, I don't know. Getting a Duna encounter without trolling Without Ike trolling, it's almost hard as keeping Kerbals alive. You know, it's funny because I have a higher percentage of always getting a Duna encounter versus Ike getting in the way. It's when I'm inside the sphere of influence and I'm trying to do, then Ike gets in the way. All right, there's our burn. We put a probe core in here. We did. All right. We just don't have an antenna. All right. <clears throat> the reason why is um, we're using roughly a thousand delta V, so we're going to have twelve hundred delta V. Um, I don't know what the capture is, but we want to be high orbit. Um, I don't know if we want to go outside of Ike or just keep it within, maybe we'll just keep it within Duna. And um, the thing is that we'll probably get our capture with this, but that'll be lugging this around almost empty and fuel. So what I'll have to do is decouple it. And once we set up communication, then I should be able to deorbit this on Duna. All right, let's see uh, how that worked out. Don't need this anymore. Uh, I see an encounter all the way out there with Duna. So let's, um, let's get, get outside of, uh, let's leave the sphere of influence here. That's going to take four days. All 
right? All right, now let's do a course correction. Say that's 12 days out. Hey, look at that. Ike's not in the way anymore. <laughs> um, let's see here. What do I want to do? probably do this with the RCS um all right so this is Andy, may I compliment you on selecting some very calm and oh yeah, I, I've I've enjoyed this. I've been using this music probably for easily five, maybe six years when I do space stuff. And thank you. Initially, I had found a YouTube channel that was streaming ambient sounds of space, but it was affecting the stream because I would restream another YouTube channel. So basically I'm taking download and re-uploading. So I found a, I found a, a public domain site that had some stuff. No, it's no, this is not the KSP stuff, no. Um, then I found a, a um, I think it was public domain uh, or uh, copyright free. And uh, they had a bunch of ambient stuff and I bought it and put it together and whatnot. All right, so let's get close to, what does this do again? I forgot. Oh, okay, not what I wanted. Okay, we're at the node. So let's see if we can do this manually. Yeah, I'm uh. So if I just use RCS, You thought it was the KSP now. They, they have something it's like a little bit more upbeat, I think. All right, cool. That worked out real nice. So turn off RCS. All right. So let's do a quick save there. We don't need Kerbal Alarm Clock right now. And I want to go check in on the guys. All right. Yeah, that was just me using the RCS. I didn't do it via burning. I just manually thrusted forward. So 94 di days and you guys aren't done yet? Really? Oh, that's not it. Oh, all right, they should be done. So we just level them up. Nice. Stop the training. And then now our scientists here are going to start <clears throat> um, start researching. Clean experiments. Ooh, ooh. So let's see here. Um, oh, wait, 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 wait. So stop. It's been a while since I've done that. We review. Here we go. There could be some music overlap and KSP uses both. Possibly. 
So we're gonna add, so this is from Minmus. This is what we uh, landed that uh, science retrieval probe. So we're gonna add this to the lab. This is actually update on the fly. Show how much science. Okay, training go away. Where is, um, So right here we have is that right 70 of 750 all right there we go all right all right that was all of our so we have 668 data data and we're going to start the research and they're giving us as it stands 16.2 science a day score all right so while they crunch away on that give me eve online vibes as well oh does it the music god i played that with a couple of my friends uh thinking that we could as three consecutive players be able to do something but you know if you don't join a big corporation with eve that was back then i don't know how it's changed so all right let's go tracking station And we want to go down to our Duna Relay. Oops. Oops. Sorry. <clears throat> All right. So we should be on course for Duna still, unless I broke something. And if we warp all the way here, it's going to take 223 days. Kevin McLeod is credited for most KSP sending his music is royalty free. Oh, I didn't know that. I, did. I was unaware. Um, let's not do this all. Yeah, let's do this. We're going to just make one big jump. All right, here we go. 223 days. Unless Ike gets in the way. I mean, that's true. You can stream Kerbal with all the music on and you don't get any hits. That's very true. Yeah, our communication has been holding pretty darn strong. So don't forget, we got three of the largest satellites. So right now their signal strength is combined. But when we start deploying them, you might see a little degradation of signal. <clears throat> All right. Coming up on. There it is. Boink. <laughs> All right. It has arrived. Um. See how much this orbit's going to cost us. 680. So we'll still have 600 Delta V. So we can use this stage to um, get our orbit dialed in. Uh, Nero48, thanks for the uh, follow. And then, like I said, I don't know if, uh, we don't have an antenna on this stage. I forgot to put an antenna, but the probe core has a short range antenna. So it might be able to bounce the signal through the relays because I want to deorbit this, not collide in it. Is air break impossible to cut down yeah, yeah, you can arrow break with the Duna. You have to get within, what is it, like uh, 50 kilometers is where the atmosphere is for. Uh... Hey, there's Ike. Ooh, there's Duna. But then that means um, I have to spend fuel to change the orbit out anyways, right? Oh. I don't know if this one would be able to arrow break. It, it might. But 
But we're just, uh... We're just brute forcing everything right now. I mean, when we bring Kerbals out, yeah, we're going to do some arrow breaking and Kerbin. I need an arrow break here, too. All right. So this stage has got 3000 Delta V in it. That's our delivery system. So we really don't need to lug this around. Um, so what we're gonna do is first of all, before we get carried away with this, <laughs> let's go see how the, how the team of scientists are doing. Duna arrow breaking isn't that volatile, but don't forget I cranked up my uh, re-entry heating by to 120%, so. Oop, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, guys. Yeah. All right. So I'm thinking, so they've got 496 out of 500 science. So let's go ahead and stop the research and let's um, transmit science. We're using our uh, big antenna there. Oops. Done. Oh, all right. Oh. We're taking a little hit on the electrical there, but beans we've got monster solar panels. We should be fine. When you plan a maneuver and burn, the example is 20 seconds. Do you do... Yeah, I do a 50-50 on that, Chris. That's kind of built into mech job. And also, when you, when you do the maneuver node, you'll see that down here. So I do 50% of the burn before and then during through the node. Darn good thing we got big solar panels on there. All right, they're done. Um, I'm wondering if we should actually rotate the crew. I think we will after we deploy the Duna. We'll bring up some more scientists and let them get some training in. All right, um, yeah, you can. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Chris. Yeah. Now, I've never changed the, the default way that the vanilla game does the burn. Where's Duna? Should be. Oh, there it is. And here we are. All right, so what I was gonna do is I was gonna run a risk of getting rid of this stage. Oh man, 42, thanks for the follow. All right, so now if we switch back to that, we've got communication because I believe yeah, we're bouncing off the uh, the uh, the Duna uh, Duna relay there. What I want to do is um, do a little little burn. All right. All right. Cool. So that's gonna. Impact on Duna, we don't have to worry about running into it. 
And let's see here. So we're sitting at a 617 by 611. Um, let's point retrograde. Or within one minute. Um, let's use RCS and see if we can't pull this down to 600. And then go and then try to... We'll do a 600 by 600, I think is what I'm trying to say. You know? Right, close enough then let's go over here oh we lost communication over there Ooh, gotta be careful of that I didn't know that. All right. Um, do I have time to go in here and adjust these? I'm going to reduce them down to We're still two minutes out. Good. Yeah, Mech Jeb has kind of been my crutch for the. Uh, like I said, if you do a node, see it, it, it'll do. You can adjust it down here. This is vanilla too, by the way. So we want to bring the 617 closer to the 600. Yep. So we're going to wait until we're about 30 seconds and we'll start using RCS to draw it back. <laughs> Excuse me. Just waiting patiently here. Where's Kerbin at in relation? Oh, it's over there. All right. All right, 56 seconds. Um, RCS on. All right, we're actually pulling away when we use that. So let's get within 30 seconds. That's, it's affecting that too. How much mono propellant do we have? Oh, we don't have a whole lot of mono propellant. Uh, new plan, real quick. Um,
getting close. <clears throat> I think one more, one more adjustment while well, I'll be fine. We're good. Close enough. All right. Okay, so now let's point prograde. Oh, and I just did that with RCS on. Yikes. All right. Um, my bad. So. Yep. Let's go over here. Push the P. Oh, we're not going to have any communication, I don't think. Oh. Yeah, we're not going to. That's going to be tough. Um. Close enough, all right? All right, so if we try to deploy a satellite here, we're not gonna have any communication, right? Yep, done. All right, so we're gonna have to do it on this side. Hey, Ficklow. How you doing? All right, so same same processes. Oh, there it is. Dude, that's scary. Same process as before. Uh, we're going to deploy this one. We're going to use the orbital information from this one for all the other ones. Um, so let's go ahead and get this out. Nice. And let's go ahead and name this one. Okay. Um, bring up notepad here. And there's our overall period right there. So it's two hours. All right. Yeah. Two hours, 48 minutes and 23.883 seconds. All right. Now what I'm hoping is um let's do a little drift about here looks like we might have bumped sure did I got to I got to fix this uh altitude I think. No, we're good. Oh, there's I'm sorry. All right. So we're good. We're good. All right. Uh JR or Junior Dan 91, thanks for that follow. Appreciate that. Let's go ahead and extend a panel. So we don't have to do anything. This this is just going to stay in orbit and do what it needs to do do. Do. Um, it's this thing that's got a job to do and we need to set up a resonant orbit. That's going to happen at the AP. And what I'm hoping for is our re relay satellite is going to help us Let's see.
Because even though there's our satellite, that's the debris. Uh, there it is. We're basically in the same spot. So I don't know if this is going to work. We're not going to have communication. Nope. All right. Well, this is a pity. All right. So I'm going to do a scum save here, guys. Yeah, see, it's trying to do a burn. All right. Let's, um, let's do this. Um, let's go back to this quick save. So how can we, how can we fix this? Um, <sighs> that's uh, the, that's the one thing you can do with, um, Um, hang on. The, the, the more complicated relay mod, um, remote tech. You can do that with remote tech. Just do it on the sides instead of the AP. All right. Well, <clears throat> see if I can do that. <clears throat> so it wants to do it at the app So you, how about if we do it at the, um, at the periaps? Why wouldn't that work? Right? The orbital period stay the same. Well, I'll be able to do the burn here, <clears throat> but you're right, the new PE won't have the signal. I might get lucky and bounce it off uh, satellite A. Let's just make sure I don't impact that thing. Ah. Oh. So if we fly over here, or there, there goes A, and we're bouncing our signal. Um, let's point prograde. <clears throat> All right, let's um, warp out to here. A nice separation from the delivery system. So now what we want to do is we want to circularize at an altitude of that. Hey, old grumpy, how the heck are you doing? All right, that looks like that's going to work and we're going to do the burn on this side. So as long as we don't collide with anything. 
Oh dear. Oh, okay. It's, um, oh jeez. No, 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 don't, don't line up. Don't line up. Oh, we're going to hit some stuff. Oh, this is not going to be good. Okay, we missed that. Woo. That was good. That was good. All right, now let's get the uh, period adjustment done here. Set this to um, 1%. And uh, the orbital period needs to be two days, 48. Oh, we're not far off. That needs to be 23. Twenty three dot eight. Close enough. All right, so we're going to shut the engine down. Turn off the RCS. All right, sweet. So now we, um, that's called scraping the paint. Rubbing is racing. All right, we've got one more to deploy and we're gonna do it over here. Oh, look at the communication there. Nice. All right, so face prograde. And then we're going to get some drift all the way over here. Hopefully. Whoa. Um. It's got plenty of electrical charge. Let me um, pull that back in just in case. All right, so we want to circularize at an altitude. All right. Okay, you stay over there, okay? I'm going to go that away. Oh, geez. All right. We'll have to uh, work that out. Uh, do, 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 do. All right. Got a new beginning for the Kerbals. They were green slime that became semi-aware, still not much more than, than a flu. And from there, they tried their hands at galactic rule with their legs being very short. They could not drive. <laughs> well, if you miss collisions by too much, it means you wasted some Delta V somewhere. Aw, all right. Um, so 248. Oh, actually, we're not that far off with that late burn. We 
can for 23 seconds. Some people like to be, uh, you know, intense. Need an eight. Ah, pretty darn close. All right. So now we should uh, <clears throat> have successfully deployed three satellites around Duna. So we can take our delivery system here. And uh, we can have an impact on Duna. We can watch it too because, you know, why not? Um, except for I'd like to do it where I can see what's going on. So we've got, oh, 4,000 Delta V. Let's have some fun with this. It's been a while since I've uh, hung out on Duna. Well, we're gonna try to send the uh, science retrieval um, probe out here. So we got a signal strength of 94% out here. That's not bad. Oh, thank you, Saturn. Appreciate that. Yeah, that's good. Tomorrow's the, we got rain tomorrow of all days. All right, let's see how much fun we're gonna have here. Yeah, today's Friday. Alex and I are going to go over to the house and we're going to uh, sand down some mud that I put up on some uh, some cracks. Um, we have some uh, wood putty needs to be sanded down. And uh, God, that looks cool. Look at that. And uh, we're going to wipe everything down, clean it all up with vacuums. And, and uh, Saturday, we're hoping to paint the hallway. And that's three doors too. So we're gonna be over there for a little bit. All right, so the atmosphere for Duna is 50 kilometers, I believe. Yep, all right. Uh, I cannot retract these, by the way. If we survive re-entry, I could try to land on the on the uh, engine bell. Got a ton of fuel left. <laughs> the antenna won't snap off. See what happens, shall we? So we're gonna have to. Uh, Modify the lander for Duna um, and the probe, too. That's going to be tricky because uh, on the other ones, we had it rendezvousing. Um, that's a lot of fuel if we want to slow down and rendezvous at the station. So if I'm reading this right as it stands, we have a 
Oh, okay. So as we get thicker into the atmosphere, our thrust or weight, what do we have here? Just, uh, oh, we got a skipper. We should be okay. Hopefully. We do have a lot of fuel though. I'm going to attempt to land on a, whoa, uh, all right. Wait, what do I have for a, re for a reaction wheel in here? Oh, all right. So the moment we lose our solar panels, our electrical charge is going to start dropping like crazy. I think it's at 25 we start seeing uh, resistance here. Or not. Maybe turn anti-radial and burn. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hopefully, um, it looks like we're not gonna have. All right, it's getting a little warm now. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe it's around 18 or 19. I don't think we're gonna have a plasma outage or anything. That would be really cool. Yeah, sure hope I'm around for that. I mean, we're gonna land on the moon before uh, that. That's exciting. I, I honestly would really love to see some updated pictures of a couple of the landers out there on the moon. Even, uh, even you know, have a rover drive up to a surveyor and take a picture. You now it's gonna be covered with dust still. All right, looks like, uh, looks like we're, we're okay. That's yeah, pulling off. We didn't come in too, uh, too steep. Um, pretty darn fast. That's a lot of fuel. So, I'm gonna put on the brakes. Yeah, we didn't come in uh, too hot and heavy. That worked out. There we go. There's our resistance. We got a little bit of a slope underneath us. All right. It'd be better too if they grew potatoes, you know? <clears throat> All right, so the skipper's working pretty good. Looks like we're keeping our thrust to weight ratio. Uh, when we get below six, <clears throat> it's a little, a little uh, fuel hungry.
Pretty flat. AGX Chris, thank you so much for that follow. Appreciate that. <laughs> oh, you're getting wobbly. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I uh, pressed the Z key instead of the X key. My bad. All right. I was just testing the waters, right? And now I don't want to land. There we go. And... Oh. Uh, uh, okay. Like a glove. No, wait. Well, this thing is actually going to live for a while. Beans the solar panels didn't snap. <laughs> All right, let's um turn off the engine. All right, cool. All right, let's um start experimenting with our uh, science retrieval lander. That was pretty cool. Hmm. No, no, we're going to do a crew rotation up at the station. Um. All right, so we have one. We have two scientists we can rotate with. All right. Practice for science retrieval lander mission to Duna. That's what we're going to try. But we're going to rotate uh, the crew. Wait a minute. I had never noticed those suits there before. Very cool. And hey, that's the uh, Kerbal X, if I'm not mistaken. I need to clean this place up. Look at it. They got stuff everywhere. All right. Um, so we should have... Kerbin Orbiter. There it is. Oh, wait. There it is. Oh, wait. Is that a two-seater? No, no, no. That can't be it. Um, I wonder what we used. Um... I wonder if we use the Mun Orbiter here. I think that's what we did because it's got RCS. So we called it, we took the Kerbin Orbiter and renamed it to Mun and didn't keep the Kerbin one. Let's um, let's go verify <laughs> the Orbiter that's uh, docked and make sure that's what it looks like. We don't do this wrong and kill Kerbals and stuff. Oh, do, 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 do. All right, so station. So we should see four RCS doohickey things. Yep, that's it. All right, nice. All right, cool. All right. I think what we'll do is we'll just bring up the new crew and instead of docking we can just uh i think there's a probe core in the command module uh 
Trying to make sure we don't have to take a pilot up there. Shouldn't have to. Already got a pilot sitting up there. Uh, so we're gonna say orbiter, and we have that one. Yeah. Yep, that's it. Let's see, do we have a probe core? We do not have a probe core. So I have to take a pilot. All right, whatever. I don't care. Ah, uh, so we need um, a pilot. Take DJ. I oh, will take Saturn. And then for uh, the scientist, we'll take race and gamer circle this guy i need to uh it's got to get fired somehow all right so uh we got our crew and uh we're gonna put them on the launch pad do a little rotation up there a little rendezvous whatnot then we'll bring the other guys back then we'll start working on the duna lander All right, so let's take them up. So the station's at 225. You know, I kind of came this close. Oh, that's how you change their outfits. Yeah, they uh, like 1.4, 1.5. Kerbal introduced uh, new uniforms and you can change the colors. You have, it was the, no, when they came out with the historical uh, DLC, you can have um, cosmonaut outfits and you can change all the colors and stuff. There's a mod, somebody created a mod so you can actually have a SpaceX suit too. The new ones. I came this close to actually uh, starting a new Factorio today. But I wanted to, I wanted to see if we get some communication around Duna. Again, Factorio is a game that I know how to play, but I'm not very efficient at it. I need to learn how to get more resources processed faster to make the science. I always seem to lag behind on something. It's true, I do. I know, but some people seem to really, you know, look ahead and, and get things set up so they can start, you know, when, when one runs out, they, have the other one start supplementing and that's what I want to learn. All right, 731 to finish our orbit. We got 992, okay. True trees are the true enemies of Factorio, especially when you're trying to drive. Tell you what, what happened my, what really helped last time was, uh, 
God, who, who did someone created a really, really nice uh, train refueling depot. Mine was lame. But I didn't understand the communication on the stops and whatnot. And there was enough of them to where the trains never waited for one another. It was really cool. <sighs> guys question someone here using Kerbalism I used it when it first came out tried using it but got a lot of crash because the RAM was full um I don't know I, I why aren't we uh fast forwarding here what's going on I used it because I didn't use it for their life support. I used it because they had radiation and I wanted to, uh, I wanted to, uh, have something else to combat, uh, besides, you know, food and Kerbalism, like Electro says, Kerbalism touches a lot of mods, so it can get tricky to try to get it all dialed in. Which sounds really cool. It makes it very flexible, but at the same time, you you never know what it's impacting. All right, so let's get rid of this and back this off. Um, you know, uh, Linux has got a mod called heat pattern that might help minimize some of the crashing. I use it. All right. I like herbalism mainly for the science need time aspect. Ooh, I, I am unfamiliar with that one. All right, so we're going there. Oh, oh, so when you have Kerbalism, it generates science over time. Oh, oh, I didn't know that. Oh, I see what you're saying. All right. Um, all right, let's just uh, see about altering our altitude here. No. All right, we're gonna have to wait a lap or two. This. That didn't help. Right. I don't I don't like that. Hey, go away. Come on. There you go. Um We'll do that. Yes, yes, it's on its way. That's why I wanted to use the O scrap because with uh, with stage recovery, we could use older parts that were uh, proven. They had higher safety ratings, so I wanted to. Yeah. One thing about getting over a, a flu and cold is uh, the end of days when you have the sniffles and your nose, because you've been blowing it so nice, it gets sensitive over time.
Is uh, Kerbalism still compatible with the current version? All right, coming up on our burn here in about five minutes here. Kerbalism. Sure is. Huh. You got a lot of uh, compatibility in figs, too. Oh, I've used the simplex before, the um, uh, tech tree. Hey, Climax, how you doing? All right, let's... Um... Oh, there's our target right there. Um, but we don't rendezvous until way over there. All right, let's, um, good. Yep, in theory. Orbits are so counterintuitive. I see what you did there. Um, five minutes out. Okay. Looks like we're going to do this on the, uh, I don't know, sun. Bummer. It's all relative, right? All right, how much, how much juice do we have on this craft? Not much, all right. I don't, I don't think I'm gonna bring the solar panels in. I don't think we're gonna dock, all right? We brought a pilot, so we're gonna pull up to the station and just hover and we'll do a crew transfer outside and whatnot. That should be fun. Hey, I wonder if Linux has a part failure mod too. What was it called? Dang it. I wonder if that still works. Oops. All right, I think we'll be okay. Let's make sure the fuel cell is on. Set for 35%. All right, so if it drops below 35%, the fuel cell kicks in. Give it a trickle charge there. Yeah, I thought initially when I played Kerbal, I thought you had to take into addition like um, Celestial Drift and stuff like that. And so someone said, nah, everything's on rails. I went, oh, wow, bummer.
All right, We're floating aimlessly. Not the best, but. Yeah, Kerbal single sure is. All right, so let's do this. Um, so let's uh, have race do an EVA. And what we can do is since there's already two dudes in there, we can put you guys, the hitchhiker. Where's Jeb? Oh, he's down, you know, eating snacks. All right. And we'll get old gamer circle out here. Yeah, he's still alive. No one's died yet. Let's go here and get Electro out. Whoa, that was interesting. I guess I have something inside that's clipped that caused them to do that. Electro going. Up for joyride. All right. So what if we? Oh wait. This way. That would be Bob. Um, so let's transfer race from here to there. And we'll transfer Bob. No, yeah, Bob there, there. Then we can transfer Gamer circle over to here. Oh, oh, light little, uh, oops, we're gonna scrape the paint. We were about to, weren't we? Trying to figure out why when Electro catapulted out there, it's probably because I have something clipped. Huh, doesn't look like, it. I wonder if he snagged something weird. Uh, huh. 
All right, so those guys should be training. So let's see what happens when he jettisons out of here. Something uh, to do with that, I guess. All right, whatever. So close. Yeah, I know, I know. Alright, so our level 5 scientists are aboard, and we have new trainees here, let's start the training. Alright, let's get these guys uh, back home. Let's see um so we've claimed the desert they've got 1800 delta v i wonder if we could do a um probably not try to get close to womberg No. We try still. Late burn. Yeah, it was kind of a, uh, didn't completely decrease the airlock. Kind of shot him out. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. Now that, now that you pointed out, I'm out of, out of beverage. So let's see here. All right, guys, hang on a sec. I'll be right back. I'm back. Sorry about that. All right. So we got 
292 and this is going to use 227 i don't think it's going to come even close but i've never actually tried to uh even get close to this before so we'll see oh there's mountains around that one too isn't there where's it at yeah it's surrounded by a mountain range could be dangerous I was curious, is there still a pilot in the capsule connected to the training station? Yeah. No, he's still there. He brought the Kerbals up. I took a pilot just in case there was a communication issue and you know, I don't have a, there's no probe core in the, uh, yeah, see, we don't have any probe cores. Oh, you're welcome. All right, let's uh, bring that in. All right. Uh, we got 65 Delta V left. Yeah, that's what, uh, Hey Stormy, how you doing? Yeah. Uh, someone had dropped, uh, that information earlier. Um, Let's spend what Delta V we have and do a inclination change. Just see if we can get close or fly over it at least. Nah, not quite enough. We could use RCS too. Yeah. Space. I've been watching, um, a lot of videos on 3d printing we just we just got one we haven't even unboxed it yet but i was watching uh reviews on the particular one that we got i got alex that game uh last year she uh um oh that actually might work way to go rcs She's not a big fan of Norman Reedus, though. So. Ooh. ER. Well, next year for Christmas, what I'm hoping for is to finally upgrade my PC, my CPU. I've got the GPU. I'm locked in for quite a few years with that. Um, It, it may not happen because we got we got some bummer information about the house. Oh, I got the uh, 3080 from uh, EVGA. We had um we had our septic inspected and it looks like it needs to be replaced. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, Al, that was all of Alex is doing too. She um she she signed up for the 3060. And when it came or when, when she got the email to buy it and I said, well, you know, the 3060, 3080, it, from what I was using a 1080 and there wasn't much of an upgrade. It was kind of a side grade. And I said, I'd rather have the 3080. So she, she bought it, not telling me. And then EVGA had, has this awesome policy that you can trade. It's a trade up. You take an old one and pay the difference for a new one. So. Worked out real well, except we had some huge drama. When it was delivered, UPS said they delivered it and it never showed up at the door. So we had to go through an investigation with UPS. Oh, my streaming PC uses my 970, my old 970. So I, I don't think, uh, I don't think we're gonna get even close. So it should be right before, should be right there, I think.
Oh, they were dead on arrival. Wow, bummer. Now, the only thing uh, I wasn't prepared for was the uh, power cables. Um, I had a, I got the card. I didn't have enough connections. I, the power supply was fine. I just didn't have enough cables. So we, um, how does, how close do you, um, I would say 25 kilometers. We got the desert. We were 8.4 kilometers, but I walked up to it so I could get the messages. So yeah, we're not going to get this. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, power supply I've had is like six years old, but it's, it's more than adequate. It's in there somewhere or over there somewhere. It's either there or there. Oh, all right. Over here. Oh, we're out of RCS. I don't see it. Go shoot. Go shoot. Right. Oh, the Titans are always, yeah, beastie. Yeah. I mean, it was worth a shot trying for it, you know? Um, it's getting a little warm. Right. This is what Things are happening right now. It's Kerbal doing it. Walked on the moon. That is a lot of juice, that's for sure. I know um, Alex was uh, contemplating on getting me a VR setup for Christmas. I said, no, I go, I want to wait till uh, we upgrade the PC before we uh, get me my, she's got VR on her system. And before, before I even do that, I'm trying to save my bucks because I want to, I either want to get a a new lithium battery for my solar setup, a 200 amp hour, or just buy another one of what I have and just rig them in series. She has the, um, um, hang on, five. And uh, I really like it. It's very comfortable for me. And she, she used to be tethered and then she bought the wireless get up and, uh, it's, it's a very enjoyable, very comfortable for me because, and I have a kind of a pointy head too. So she was thinking about getting the, the latest version of the Vive for me. We looked at, we shopped around, looked at prices and stuff. And I said, you know what, let's, let's wait.
No, it's just, it's 73 years old. The index, wow. That's a nice one. Hey, look. This is the fourth time that we've landed in the water. Did they change it or do I have a mod conflicting to where I can't see underneath? Oh well. Yeah, to the best of our knowledge, there's never been an inspection or anything like that. So uh, we look at it as, uh, or I look at it as a blessing because we're gonna add another either a half bath or full bath to the house. And with the septic system, you have to know if it can, if you have enough leaching. So with the old one, you can't know unless you dig it up. So, hey, oh, I thought he brought back some science. He brought back zero science. <laughs> you guys. Woo. What is that? EVA ribbons. Wow. Okay, cool. All right, so let's go back up. Uh, oh, we already turned on the training, right? Okay. So it's uh it's about the two hour mark. So what I want to do is give Kerbal a restart here. And then I'm gonna go uh use the uh you know the astronaut room. So uh I'm gonna shut this down and do a restart. I like to do that that way, you know, if you're if you do a lot of screen swapping, you know, if you go from uh you know back and forth between buildings and stuff, it really destroys your uh <clears throat> Your performance. Oh, interesting. Woo! Belly suit. All right. <laughs> That's almost out of, uh, um, what was that? Replay one? What was that, that, that movie where everyone was in VR? Real player one or something like that. <laughs> All right, so we'll restart and then I'll be back momentarily.
Alrighty, I'm back. I'm back. All right. Sorry about that. I had to make a quick phone call. Checking with Alex. She's a little under the weather and at work. And I just wanted to see how she was doing. She forgot to take her Sudafed today. Uh oh, hang on. That was almost a catastrophe. All right. Is that there. All right. Thank you, Saturn. All right. Let's, um, let's, um, take a look at our science retrieval. Um, it's a lot more complicated, uh, modding a fallout game anyways. And the, the one thing about it is for a while there, when I was modding KSP like crazy, I, I knew which mods played nice with other ones. Um, and of course the better ones, I think in my opinion, when they took advantage of the API, they seemed to function a lot better. Um, now when I first started modding Fallout 3, I followed a, a gentleman's tutorial called Gopher for Fallout 3 <clears throat> and pretty much every single thing that he did happened in mine and it was, it, it, and he would explain when you had conflicts, why and what to do. And I, I kind of learned from that. So when I started doing Fallout New Vegas, and there was a, a graphical, you know, when, I, when I'm doing textures and one was complaining that this is right over that, I would, I would know which one I wanted. So, but then I kind of lost my edge in Fallout 4. All right, so we have a retrieval, uh, science, right. Oh wait, that's not it. That's it. Uh, continue without saving. All right, here we go. Bethesda has no way to specify, add, remove, modify, or merge. They do, they do. Um, I know a lot of people, so I'm doing the Tales of Two Wasteland, which I'm having a ton of fun with. And the support team and the mod team really don't care for Vortex and they prefer Mod Organizer 2. I said, all right, well, you know, and uh, unfortunately the tutorials I use to get Tales of Wasteland use Vortex. So I was kind of stuck between a rock and a hard spot there. All right, so let's figure out. Um, so the retrieval unit, I was leaving the lander on the ground so I didn't have to take as much stuff home. Um, so how much, so if we wanna, and I guess for, we don't have to power, we could do shoots, right? We could do drogue shoots and then real shoots to land. Um, try that. Vortex and modern are made by the same guy. Really? I didn't know that. This Vortex is made by the guys at Nexus. I thought Mod, Mod Organizer 2 was someone else. What do I know? Well, what the, what the Nexus... Oh, I didn't know that. Um, I know that the guys with Tales to Two Wasteland, they have a frequently asked questions and they have all these all these negative rants about it. So, you know, to each is their own, right? All right, so if we wanna lift off from Duna, we just basically reverse these numbers. So to get back into orbit, we need 2000 Delta V. All right, let's see here. So let's change this to Duna. And um, get rid of that. So we got a, a low thrust to weight ratio. All right, so for just for giggles, I'm not gonna change the lander. I'm gonna leave the lander as it is and we're gonna do shoots. Oh, we're missing some science too. Yeah. Um, hang on, go away. So what are we missing here for science? Oh, seismic, yes. Wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. Can the... So this can only hold so much science. Is that how I'm reading this? 
No. Okay, no. no we're good. Uh, um, and that. Dang it. All right, so we have the temperature, we have the atmospheric, um, we have the seismo, we have that, um, we have that, we have that. The science junior is inside. All right. All right, so new science added. All right, so let's make this version two. Oh, and it said we added a second antenna. Oh, we added the antenna here. Um, um just for giggle, I, I'm just playing around here. I don't know what's going to work and what's not going to work. Oops. Okay, I'm not trying to do that. That's what I'm trying to do. <clears throat> um, I guess we'll put it here. Um, all right, so we need to get this or this actually, this needs to get this to, uh, Duna. All right, so let's put this back this here and so we need put this around Kerbin non-atmospheric so um, we're going to add just a little bit of fuel here and I, I think we should be okay so we have an antenna so when it gets out to Duna we'll be able to communicate through the uh, relays out there and we have some RCS. We also have some, oh, all right. Why do I have an antenna with no probe core here? That's strange. That's really bizarre. Why did I do that? All right, well, we need to fix that. Let's do this. And we don't need an expensive probe core. Not that it matters. Grab that. Um. Oh, 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 oh. I need to put shoots on the lander. That's what I was going to do. That's right. Hmm. Yeah. All right, let me finish this. having a lot of doubts <laughs> all right um so i forgot so duna atmospheric if we land this with chutes, we can use the lander's fuel to get the probe into orbit. So we need to put chutes um, somewhere.
I help. That sounds fine. It really does. All right, there's our shoots. <clears throat> so we're just making some slight modifications to our pre-existing uh, <clears throat> retrieval probe just to see how far it can and can't get. So this is all for the lander and the retrieval unit are all set for Duna. Low thrust to weight ratio, but we're gonna see if that works. Um, this, if we put this uh, in Kerbin, this has got enough fuel, it's got enough thrust too. So we're gonna, we're gonna add a few more little fuel tanks to make sure we get to the 2200 or 2300 so if we grab these guys that works real well i like it yeah i do yeah that we just set that up at the beginning of the stream um oh what am i doing it's not that is not what i was looking for All right, so let's um, heavy and then and parent. Right. Again, all we have to do is get this to uh, an orbit around Kerbin, and then this stage should get us to Duna. And then what's left over will ease us into landing and we'll use the chutes to land using the fuel from these guys to, uh, you know, do the rest. Just see how far it gets. Learn from our mistake. All right. Um, looks like we're going to add some boosters because I need to get it to a higher orbit, I think. Uh, yeah. That doesn't get it quite to orbit. Um. Now this stage has no antenna, so that means it's a, a dumb stage. All right, so um, let's go up here and borrow this. Didn't mean to call it a dumb stage. I just want to make sure I don't leave it in orbit, that's all. First you, Andy, I've started playing KSP again because you're playing it and I can't remember how to do anything. Victory. <laughs> uh oh, what did I do? Oh. Uh, far, that's the, um, isn't that the realistic physics for planes and rockets? So, various something realism. I 
I tried using it. I was horrible at that. All right, so we want to do some boosters here. Not a solid rocket. Not a big fan of solid rocket. I do use them. Um, oops, that was weird. There we go. Back when the vanilla Atmo model was really, really bad, it was necessary, but now the vanilla is, yeah. I, I just know it made it a lot more realistic and quite frankly, it was, well, I didn't know what I was doing either, so it was very difficult. Um, so what happens if we go over the top with... Or actually... I think that would work better. <clears throat> um... All right, so let's get some basics here. So let's get this strutted. And you. All right. All right, let's see if this is even gonna help or not. Let's see what happens when we put the um, fuel ducts on. Okay, that might help a lot. Has anyone by chance tried out, uh, hang on a sec. Has anyone gotten a copy of that and tried it? And, uh, it, it seems like a cool game. I bought it. And, uh, I like the idea that where you have crew, you have, you know, what different weapons, shields, You don't, you don't get it? Um, yeah, I played the free version and I, I thought it was fun. It's got multiplayer too. I've tried it. It's a bit hard to get a good ship build. Is it? I don't mind a little bit of a challenge. I just didn't, I think I've read to where their multiplayer has a little bit of a sync issue and they're working on it. It looks, you know, it's not your graphically superior game but i like the whole concept of uh it reminds me 
of the old arcade games, you know, the graphic. I, I, I got a kick out of that. Hey, I got that one right. All right, so we got our strutty in place. Um, all of our engines. We're gonna let go of our boosters. Go that. Okay, so hopefully, we can get this into a high orbit. Get to Duna, and see what works and what doesn't work. All right, let's do this. It's Friday though, it doesn't feel like Friday. You know, it's, it's weird. I, my whole schedule got out of whack when I was sick. Oh, nighttime lunch. So we want to put this up to there. There we go. <sighs> I I don't think I can wrap <clears throat> my head around the space exploration. It it uh it boggles my mind. I I was talking earlier to where I wanted to start another factorio and what i wanted to do was learn how to get resources more efficiently uh, my factory my main factory as i call it hang on uh, okay my main factory would always lag behind on getting the science out that i needed so I guess I have to start learning how to make my own science versus using the older blueprints I'm using. I know, I know. All right, so we've got two minutes of fuel in our main stage here. By the way, for those who don't know, um, all of my streams for Kerbal and my Tales 2 Wasteland, I have been putting up on my YouTube channel. Did I ever update my social command here? I did. There it is. There's the YouTube at the end there. I, I went through the whole process of doing a brand new install, installing mods, testing, setting up the, the mod list, all that kind of stuff. All right, let's um, play that. How much electrical we have got? All right, 3,000. I think all the engines that we do, yeah, they generate electrical. All right, because I don't want to deploy my solar panels if we're going to be going through an atmosphere. Probably should have swapped out the ones that I can retract. Um, all right. Looks like we got about 500 Delta V left. We only need 282. Nice.
I know, I know a lot of people are looking forward to Starfield. I think I'm going to wait for the initial rush of that. Whenever that comes out, I am looking forward to KSP two. Um, I am pretty darn interested in, um, falling frontier. Um, Hostile Mars. Forever Skies looks really good. And um, it's called Aquatico. Bethesda games are always broken when they're released. True. Not fibbing. All right, here we go. Do that. So we've only got 300. Now, hopefully, I did this right. Oh, yeah, we got communication. All right. Let's back this up. So, uh, again, I don't want to put the solar panels out because I can't put them back in. So if this, and I doubt this is going to work the first shot. So we'll have to do a redesign on the solar panels. Um, all right, Duna, where are you? You are, there you are. All right, so thousand Delta V. And we don't do this for almost two years. We're definitely in, in a bad launch window. Oh yeah, we are. <laughs> yeah, all right. So let's go ahead and put this into Kerbal Alarm Clock. And which will be good because uh, our scientists need to have some training. So let's go into the tracking station. I'll be curious how KSP2 does a maneuver planner since it has multiple systems. I, I mean, a lot of people are just wondering how they're going to do multiplayer. I mean, they, they briefly talked about it. I look at that strong communication with those relays. Well, it's strong now. You know, if we get the probe back to the Kerbin uh, system, we could always go out and uh, Rendezvous with it and retrieve the science. It's always possible. You guys saw the video of um, Nirta. They, they hired Nirta to uh, work on uh, 
mod support or, or the game or something like that. And, and I guess no one really knew who he was until he said, I'm responsible for these mods. And no communication. <laughs> Damn, we got you. Oh yeah, I mean, it. I am blown away with the people that use Blender and just do some incredible things out of it. Oh, did they really tax? I saw the, um, well, you know, their, their announcement, their early access for announcement video where they showed, you know, the, um, a, a, uh, a trajectory being plotted and stuff like that. All right, 140 days. We're getting there. Jets work. Wow. Huh. Oh, there's green lines, man. All right. I've never done that before. I've, um, I was thinking about doing something similar. What's the name of the probe that's zipping around the sun right now? That's doing studies on it. So do that, do that. It's, you know, the one craft that's gone the fastest. All right. So we have 14 minutes here before we do this. I wanted to go to the station and see how the guys are doing. Parker, thank you. I was thinking about doing a probe, toasty, <laughs> and getting, making a, a an elliptical orbit and see how close I can get with, you know, heat shielding and stuff like that. So we were training, right? Uh, training facility. Oh, wow. Okay. Nice, guys. There they are. All right, so let's stop training. And uh, they're, they're all a quick study, I guess. And then we're gonna start uh, research. All right. Now let's get back to tracking station. And get to this thing. And we're gonna do like we did last time. We're gonna delete our node and recalculate a new one, just in case. So 1006.9. Huh, a little cheaper. Make sure we still have Duna targeted. Looks like we do. Yep, all right. A little cheaper. Hardest thing I ever did was to get Kerbals to Drez and back. And with life support mod. Once I figured out how hard that was, I, I did not want to try to attempt Duna or Eve. Ooh.
right, so how do we do? See an encounter. Cool. All right, let's um. I'll be honest with you, we'll probably lose communication. We just have a little itty bitty antenna. All right, let's do a uh, course correction. Pretty, pretty early on. Well, oops, I mean, do that. Okay. Oh, that's actually not that bad. Whoa, all right. Very anxious to see what happens here. You know how long it would take to deploy a relay around the sun? Oh, that worked. All right. Oh, oh, that's a precise maneuver. I mean, it, it simulates what they added to stock. Uh, there's also another one called precise node. I like precise maneuver a little bit better. All right, that's 241 days. You're welcome. So we don't definitely don't have any communication out here on the belt. Uh oh, hang on. Hang on. Oh, we're using up electrical charge. <gasps> oh no. We're going to run out of power. How far out is it? Still 155 days. Let's see if we can pick up any sort of uh, communication, pop out a panel when I have to. Turbin is right there. No. Uh, the, I think the probe core and the SAS modules are uh, what do you call it? A parasite drain? This is bad. I 
I mean, if we're this close to Kerbin and not getting a signal, we're not going to be... Oh, Waduna's right here, though. Um, yeah, it does. It just, unfortunately, I can't communicate with it because I'm not in control. Yeah, I know. Ugh. There's absolutely nothing I can do, right? So, retracted. No communication. Um, can't turn on anything. Hmm. Um... That one is drained, so that means we're working on last battery, right? So that would be what's inside the probe. Kerbal doesn't let you know what is requesting so much EC. I don't remember. Well, if if I hold, oh, you're right. It doesn't tell me. The probe cores are supposed to go into hibernation mode when I'm in warp, so it saves. Hibernation is off, but it's set to auto though. Hmm. So it's probably, um, probably the, uh, reaction wheels I have. No, I, I don't have any communication, so I can't fire the engine off or anything. Oh. So, unless I can get a quick communication. I mean, to be honest with you, I don't mind doing this. How do we do this? Let's do that. All right, and then because you guys don't want to wait around for another launch. Again, this is a carefree. So I wonder who gets communication first. I mean, we're moving closer to Duna and further away from uh, Herbal. Yeah, we wouldn't have gotten any any signal whatsoever. So maybe I should put a little bit bigger antenna. We saw nothing. No way. Wait, oh, it's bouncing a signal. Oh, look at that. 22%. All right. So let's go ahead and no longer cheat. I just even even if I got there, I don't think the signal would have done anything because everything would have been dead. Dead, 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 dead. All right. I'm not gonna waste any fuel trying to. So we've got 1584 in our delivery state. Well, maybe maybe we could try to do um that's a little far out. All right. Ryan, appreciate it. Yeah, I'm just gonna Butts around here. So if we bring that down and then end up 90 kilometers. Um, sure. All right. So we're going to spend six Delta V on that. That's true. 
you know actually the fix for that is to put um put the uh the static ones on the base so you get a little bit of a trickle charge later on you know you just slap an rtg in there A, they're really expensive and they're really heavy too. Six hundred and ten delta V. All right. Well, the um, I've got two reaction wheels here, um, and I know when they're in, when they're on, they're they're drawing power, and I have a reaction wheel here. So I would say those three reaction wheels um, are. I guess said the parasites. I think the the next version will put the uh, static solar panels that way, you know, because this is probably going to get ripped off. Hey, here's Duna. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hey, hey. <laughs> it's our. Uh, First piece of uh, equipment that landed on Duna. Exactly. Yep. Well, again, I just didn't want to bore you guys with a, another launch, another, you know, interception, some more time warping. All right. Uh, so let's get. Where's the sun at? Sun's on that side. So let's go over here. And um, yeah, let's do that. PT equipment on Duna. Yeah, piece of equipment. Yeah, it was the um, the delivery stage for the uh, the relays. Isn't it so? Give me, uh, aren't there new launch pads on the planets? Pizza delivery, Duna, sir. I thought I read that they added launch pads on the Mun, Minus, Duna. It, didn't they add those to the vanilla game? You just have to find them. And I didn't know MKS had their own launch pads. I always would use, um, they included a mod called, what was it called? Global Construction. But I liked using the the full mod, and then from it, you could take a blueprint of something and build it. And it would make this little package, and then you could take the package and haul it somewhere and then, you know, let it inflate or deflate or whatever. All right. All right, so we've got 924 Delta V left. Um, I'm not going to, uh, first of all, let's find the drogue shoots. You are a normal shoot. As far as I know, they only added discoverable launch sites around Kerbin. Oh, I thought they added one on the moon. Yeah, yeah, you have to have the, uh, the parts.
I thought there was something here that showed how much pressure the kilopascals. I wonder if NASA or Oskomos intend to build any manufacturing facility on the moon bases. Ooh, ooh. I just want to see them create fuel on the moon so they don't have to keep sending fuel. That would be a real good plus, I think. All right, so let's just get right here. Do this. All right, big break coming on. So we still have 270. Oh, all right. All right, stop, stop. Still quite a ways up. I'm gonna try. I don't know what it looks like. We're still 13 kilometers up. We have 141 delta V in this. Um, That's it, guys. Be right back. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. That was Alex calling. All right, so drug shoots are set. I don't think that's going to snap off. Um, these are set to deploy at 2,500. So that's getting close. And it should slow us down quite a bit. Um, fairly flat underneath us right now. These are set at 1,000. Here goes the drogue shoots. Uh, they didn't really slow us down that much. Oh. More shoots. <gasps> oh my goodness. Yeah, we need more shoots. All right. Um, <laughs> not bad, huh? <clears throat> All right, let's go ahead and turn on our science collection here. So it's going to store it in the experimental storage unit. Sweet, thanks. And we are collecting science. 
collected seven experiments. Thanks, guys. Um, so did I put in it? I do. Oh, oh, I forgot we, we have this thing here. Oh. All right. So to get maximum success, we have a total of 4,000 Delta V here. Um, I think what we're going to do is we're going to transfer fuel to, um, our little device here, and we're going to use the lander's fuel to get us off the planet. Um, because if we look at the, uh, at the roadmap here, it's 1450. Now that's landing, right? But usually you can do the reverse and then coming back, it looks like another thousand to maybe 2000. So 4,000 Delta V roughly overestimated. So we've got that. Then we'll just uh So the, the plan was I was going to leave this here and we have this little tiny relay outpost here, but I think what would be a better idea is to use the um, fuel from this stage to get it into orbit. And um, yeah. All right, let's see how badly this works. Put this back. Um, and um, oh, I still have science collection on, don't I? We got problems. E, yeah, all right. A little hard to uh, stick it prograde here. Whoa, 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 whoa. My bad. Oh, that was a fatal error. I recovered. Can't, I can't keep it from rolling. Uh, we need further. This thing is not going to make it back to Kerbin. That was a bad launch, too. We had to, we have to get above 50.
was not paying attention. Am I fitting all this science in there? Can't tell. Uh-oh. All right. That's bad. Maybe. You ready to stage? We're gonna lose that antenna. We survive? No, we did. Oh wait, no. Okay, so we got to do another. Um. So this thing has got 3,000 delta V. I need to fix the orbit. That's too low. All right, that'll keep it from uh, burning up in the atmosphere. So, let's see if we can get back to Kerbin. How far is Ion Engine? Uh, I can unlock it. I got the science. So... Six hundred and seventy six delta V get to Kerbin. And that happens in uh one year. Um well a little over a year. Where where's Kerbin at?
thing is we would have to make sure our trajectory uh uh all right so um oops oh whoa whoa Oh, that was dangerous. Really? Oh. All right, so remove. We got another one. Periapsis of 80. All right. But see, if if we if we can get that, we can make a course correction inside Kerbin way out here and get a capture because if we try to do a course correction between now we're going to lose communication won't be able to do it so if we do this burn then and this maintains it might be doable oh I didn't want to go there I on the engine need a lot of big solar panels. Long burns. Very, very long burns. Not very, very, but very, very. All right. Let's see. Uh, whoa. days and what we'll do is again we'll we'll cancel it recalculate it could be better it'd be worse just don't know I haven't been doing a very good job of my uh, debris. I've got 21 pieces floating out there. Oh, it's probably those stack separators. Whoa. All right. All right, now this is set 10 minutes before we actually have to burn. So we got we got some wiggle room here. Um we don't need Kerbal alarm clock. And let's calculate. It's about the same. Let's see if we still have. Oh, it's oh, it's highly elliptical. All right, let's, let's do it.
So we got our static panels here. Wait a minute. Why did that get moved out another two years? Huh. That's interesting. Another two years? Wow. All right, let's get rid of this set as soon as possible. Oh, won't well, give me a calculation for that. All right, so in 71 days, Well, that was a bummer. I don't know what happened there. Oh, start burning 20 minutes. All right. Well, weird. Kerbal calculations got a little hooey, I guess. Maybe 10 minutes is too short for it to recalculate. Yeah, the uh, if you hover the mouse over, see the delta V cost, and also if you take a look at like so, if we try to plot here in the red zone, uh, your departure is well, your delta V is much higher. So blue is better. So is what you want to do is so so like right here I could leave 2,000 delta V in 150 days. If, if that's when I pick. Yeah, Chris Abbott looked it up. I do not see. Oh, there it is. All right. That means we're coming in here. Wait, how come that's purple? Oh, because we're not out. We're not out of the sphere of influence. Uh, here, All right. All right. 
So now, oops, if we go. So we've got 2,296 Delta V on this little guy. And when we get inside here, would it be as easy, wow, to do this and then that? Yes, so we can establish an orbit and maybe rendezvous with the station. I just didn't believe that would ever be happening. All right, so first things first, let's uh, get it back in here. So 284 days, it went to avert your eyes. That would be cool. That would really be cool if you could, uh, you know, point from A to B and it would take a look at all the positions of all the planets and moons. And it, it's kind of like, uh, what, Google Maps in a way, right? So sometimes it gives you the shortest path, which isn't the quickest path. And then you can see some of the roads along the way, it'll say three minutes slower. So, you know, something similar like that, you know? All right, you could get here in 22 years and it's gonna cost this much fuel because you bounce from here to here to there, or you go direct and, you know, cost a ton of fuel. All right. Nice. All right, so our station has got, it's at 225, right? Right. So this is at 274. Um, let's bring let's bring this out to um, like 350. So if we do a radial out way out here. Close enough. Got 20 experiments from Duna. Whoa. All right. Now let's uh, establish the orbit. Again, gonna cost almost half of the fuel we have. Um, yeah, but then I have to get closer to the atmosphere. Yeah, I could. You're right. I could. Um, like I said, well, we're going to, um, we're going to muscle this one. All we have to do is rendezvous with the station and well, the scientists will come out and grab the data. It's going to be messy. There's 20 things he's got to take out of here and have to have beakers and baggies and stuff. As light as this thing is, I, I really don't think we're going to eat up that much fuel. All right, so target that. We we do have a little discrepancy in our uh, 
inclination here with our target. Try to fix that. That's better. It's gonna cost 84 Delta V. Whoa. You know, if it looks like we can't rendezvous, we could do two things. We could have the scientist get in their lander, their orbiter, come out, rendezvous, grab it, and go back to the station. Or we could send a um, we could send another craft up here to latch onto it, and uh, we could transmit the science to the station. There's not enough battery on this to transmit. All right, so. Uh, And we can use a little small graboid and just have a, a floating battery pack. So we've got our intercept. Let's get over here. We are six minutes from the rendezvous. There it is. It looks like we're uh, pretty much on target there too. Um, let's see here, let's do halfway. We're gonna start slowing down here. So I have 1100 Delta V.
had a weird uh, uh, corrections I had to do there. It is acting very strange. As I'm slowing down, we're getting further from the target for some reason. Oh, all right, never mind. Everything's fine now. I did something wrong. <laughs> so plenty of fuel though. on track my bad Well, we did it. We got this little guy to Duna with one little cheat because I didn't put the solar panels out. All right. How are these guys doing? Um, I'm assuming Still working on oh it's it's all full so let's say stop the research let's go ahead and uh transfer race to here i don't want to pop them out of there i don't it was throwing the trajectory up it's really weird well eva race out of there weird and we're gonna go fly over here to our duna probe Go to the storage facility. Oh, he's got them all. He's got them. I don't know why he's got his parachute out here in space. Maybe just feel safer. And board. All 
All right, well, that does all that. Let's go ahead and um, have this deorbit. back to the station and we have science we need to transmit they still have uh wait a minute So that number should disappear, I think. Oh, there it is. All right. So they still have over 568 data to start crunching on, plus what we just brought from Duna, too. So when we finish, this should be zero, I think. Huh, why didn't that zero out? Interesting. Hmm. there's still 596 science that needs to be transmitted wow really i wonder if that's a bug Was it, you, you shouldn't be able to go to 500 although we timed warp a lot i wonder if we built up like a buffer this might be a cheat i don't know um I don't know. Might take a restart of Kerbal to clear that out. That's weird. Okay, at least that number went up. All right. Look at all this Duna stuff. Cool. All right, well, let's put them back. What happens when I clean the experiments? I don't know what that does. Let me see here. So Kerbal Space Program, MPL. Um, clean 
It provides access to curb net and clean experiment action, which can dis restore mystery goo containment in the Science Junior module. All right, well, we don't have any of those, so that wouldn't do anything. The lab is maximum oxygen is two kerbals, contains at least one carbonate in order to process the science stored for the craft as data. Okay. Takes electricity, understand that. Well, we'll just have to see what happens tomorrow. So guys, perfect stopping point. We did it. We were successful to, to get our little science retrieval to Duna. Um, tomorrow is Saturday. No stream tomorrow. And uh, Sunday, uh, again, I'm, I'm back and forth if I want to do another Factorio. So uh, maybe I'll uh, post something out in the Discord to see what you guys think. All right. All right, guys, let's roll some credits here real quick. Do, 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 do. Yeah, that was a nice grab. Thanks, River. Thanks, monster. Nicola, we'll see you later. Uh, I press credits. I guess uh, I guess we didn't have any follows or anything today. Weird. All right, guys. You guys have a good weekend. I'll see you guys later.